Hi, my name is Martin Morgan, and I lead the Bioconductor Project for the statistical analysis and comprehension of high-throughput genomic data. Bioconductor is interested in all sorts of high-throughput data, from DNA sequencing through microarrays to flow cytometry, cytometry, proteomics, imaging, and a number of other data types. Our focus on statistical analysis and comprehension comes from the nature of the data. Modern methods generate huge volumes of data that necessarily require statistical summary. As researchers, we often conduct focused, designed experiments that also fit within a statistical framework. The technology that generates the modern genetic data types and the lab protocols that are employed often leave technological artifacts that need to be addressed using statistical techniques. And finally, complex data integration challenges make us think carefully about the statistical consequences of the steps that are involved. Bioconductor consists of almost a thousand software packages written in the R statistical programming language that help us to address these data types and statistical challenges. This is an example of the type of problem that Bioconductor might be used for. It involves RNA-seq data generated to assess differential gene expression in a designed experiment. Each point in the figure represents a gene. There are tens of thousands of genes, and the level of expression of the gene has been measured across dozens of samples. On the x-axis is the average expression. On the y-axis is the difference in log fold change between the gene samples from one treatment group and samples from another. We're interested in those genes, highlighted in red, that are differentially expressed between our treatment and control group. The statistical challenges are many. How are we supposed to normalize the RNA-seq counts between samples? What's the correct model of statistical error to describe the distribution of count data across samples? We've made measurements of many thousands of genes on just a few dozen samples. How are we supposed to perform statistical tests that effectively extract information from this, these relatively small experimental designs? All of these challenges need to be addressed if we're to effectively control false discovery rate. This set of challenges has been well developed within the bioconductor community, and there are a number of packages that facilitate straightforward, statistically informed analyses of RNA-seq differential expression, packages such as DESeq2 and EdgeR. Bioconductor users type commands into a console this might seem surprisingly old school, but actually one ends up writing scripts that greatly facilitate reproducible research. Bioconductor users have access to an extensive help system. The help system consists of manual pages that document individual functions, as well as vignettes that demonstrate overall workflows and use of packages. Bioconductor users have access to novel visualization and other techniques to facilitate communicating their statistical results to other team members. The Bioconductor website contains material on how to install, learn, use, and ultimately contribute back to the Bioconductor project. There are facilities for discovering and navigating the thousand packages that we offer. There's extensive archives of previous course materials, access to an active support site, and many other useful resources. The strengths of the Bioconductor project include the extensive and interoperable nature of our software, the respected and well-used aspects of the project, and the accessibility in terms of open source software, extensive documentation, and an active and supportive community. The major workflows supported by Bioconductor include RNA-seq and microarray gene differential expression, 
methylation and other array and sequence-based epigenetic and regulatory analyses, variant, gene, and pathway annotation, and integrative approaches to high-throughput data types. I'll conclude with a brief introduction to the Bioconductor team, its technical advisors and scientific advisory board, and of course acknowledging our funding from the National Human Genome Research Institute and the National Cancer Institute of the National Institutes of Health, from NSF, and from the European community. Please visit our website for more information.